Welcome back to City Online. We're talking about Timothy McVeigh's execution today with Dave Parkinson, co-founder of the Canadian Coalition Against the Death Penalty. And we were just looking at videotape there from earlier this morning of people reacting uh, to the execution of Timothy McVeigh. We get to the phones right now. Kelly, are you there? Hi, Kelly. Hi. Um, I calling. don't think it's right for the execution. Mm -hmm. I, I don't think that two wrongs make a right. Right. I don't think that it would bring many of the victims closure to the bombing because it's not going to bring back the people who died. Mm -hmm. so. it's, a, it's, a, it's a cold and uh, blunt reality and, um, you know, Dave, one of the things that uh, uh, certainly affected a lot of people, notwithstanding the, the horrific nature of this particular crime, is that uh, we here in Canada in the most last couple number of years have had a couple of very high profile cases mm -hmm. of people in jail for extended periods of time, convicted of murder under our judicial system. Mm -hmm. That's proven they didn't do it. Like, didn't do it no, exactly. at all. Exactly. And um, in the United States, actually, there have been a number of cases where there has been substantial evidence um, indicating that uh, an individual may very well be innocent, and they've proceeded with the executions anyway. Um, the court system down there um, operates a lot differently than ours, and uh, what a lot of people don't realize is when a person goes up for appeal, they're not appealing the, um, the conviction based on merits of innocence or not. Um, they're, ba they're basically looking at the trial to see if there's any procedural errors in the trial as what had happened with the FBI submitting evidence mm -hmm. in the McVeigh case. And uh, in a lot of cases, regardless of whether or not there are actual valid issues of innocence brought up, a lot of times the court refuses to even look at it and proceeds with the execution. Yeah. Um, so this is um, uh, one of the things that a lot of people who do support capital punishment don't realize is how the courts actually address cases um, where there may be issues of innocence involved. Let's get back to the phones. Bob, are you there? Yes, I am. Can you hear me? Yes. What do you think, Bob? Okay, I'm all in favor of the death penalty. Mm -hmm. The only condition I laid down is that if they have video or DNA evidence to positively prove he did it. We had some cases here in Canada where some guys were innocent but were proven on DNA. Mm -hmm. You've got DNA to prove that they're guilty and by all means execute them. I believe it's a good deterrent because you'll ne anyone who's been lawfully executed will never come back out and kill again. Because of our lax justice systems we have seen people who've been in jail they've come back out and have committed violent crimes again. Mm -hmm. and I wouldn't be all surprised in the, in the distant future guys like Paul Bernardo are going to get back out again because of our lax justice system. You know, Bob raises a point here, Dave, that, mm -hmm. uh, that a lot of people take uh, great uh, exception to in terms of our system. Uh, and, and it affects their views related to capital punishment. Mm -hmm. They know these people will be out at a certain point, convicted murderers. Mm -hmm. Is there one other point? Yeah. Yeah, one point, too. I also believe with our young offenders, guys 16 and 17, if yep. they lawfully commit and they know what they're doing, they should be eligible for execution. I know that sounds brutal, but if they're old enough to, to plan out a murder like that, then they're old enough to face the consequences. If you know your rights, you know your responsibilities. Dave, how much of uh, people's views do you feel are affected by the perceptions about mm -hmm. the number of people who do get out and then kill again? Well, I think a lot of the, uh, the loopholes and uh, the flaws that exist within our justice system are what fuel the rhetoric that's known as capital punishment. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people, because of the frustration uh, with the loopholes and dangerous and violent offenders getting back out in the streets to reoffend, um, turn around and say, well, if this person was killed when they were in custody, they obviously wouldn't be out on the streets again reoffending, and uh, I mean that's that's fine and dandy to say that, but I mean to look at the actual issues and address the issues is another thing. What needs to be done is there needs to be a review of our justice system where these flaws exist, and um, find out how we can repair that before we talk about uh, taking a flawed justice system and then empowering it to take away people's lives. Yeah. Um, what he'd mentioned about executing uh, juveniles, um, I just wanted to uh, to mention that is a violation of international law uh, under international national law, it is illegal to execute anybody under the age of 18. Uh, China, for instance, will not execute somebody who was under 18 at the time of the offense. However, the United States leads the Western world, actually leads the world, uh, for the execution of juveniles and has killed more juvenile offenders in the past 10 years than all other nations combined, including countries like Saudi Arabia, the Sudan, Pakistan, other we, countries. We all where... have reputations uh, within mm -hmm. the international uh, community of, of being 
very, very hard on the issue of capital punishment. No, certainly, certainly much yeah. more tough than the United States, and yet the United States outnumbers them when it comes to executing juvenile offenders. Yeah. And of course, we're seeing that case going forward in the States now, the boy of about 14 years of age, I mm -hmm. believe it is. But, uh, uh, let's get back to the phones now. Kelly, are you there? Yes, I am. Thank you for calling, Kelly. What do you think? Uh, I do believe the punishment fits the crime. Mm -hmm. um, you know, we need to send out a signal that if you kill somebody, it's not like you're going to sit in jail for 50 years, and that's, that's fine and dandy. Mm -hmm. um, I'm a taxpayer, and I don't agree with paying for people to sit in jail for a long time because they did a punishment. Yeah. I mean, if we start fitting the punishment with, you know, a, a just thing or punishment, yeah. um, people will stop doing what they do. Mm -hmm. I mean, we got to send the signal that, you know, no more raping, no more killing. I mean, these people go to jail and they think it's all funny. Ha, 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 I'm out in a few years. Yeah. I mean, I don't agree with Dave's coalition. I, I think it's wrong. If somebody kills somebody, I do believe that they should be sentenced to death themselves. What about the, uh, thank you, Kelly, what about uh, separating this issue just for a moment here in terms of the cost? Uh, mm -hmm. People make that uh, cost that if, you know, McVeigh stayed in prison, died at the age of 33, presume he lives for, you know, lived for another 40-odd uh, years, mm -hmm. uh, you know, what would the taxpayers be paying over that period of time? Well, well, the fact of the matter is it is actually cheaper to house somebody for uh, a life sentence than it is to um, actually have them go through the appeals process, uh, exhaust mm -hmm. their appeals, uh, especially if they are um, seeking uh, state or uh, provincial aid to, to go through those appeals. It is cheaper to keep them housed up for life than it is to have them executed. And uh, now what she was also saying about the just punishment um, uh, with rapists in society, well, we don't, uh, when someone commits a rape, um, we don't send them off to jail to be raped. When somebody uh, commits a theft, we don't send them off to jail to, to be stolen from. We don't take drunk drivers and set them in the middle of the road and run them down. So why is it uh, considered then a just punishment when we're talking about a person's life? I mean, these other crimes are also quite violent, yet we do not subject the individual to the same sort of violence that they committed in the act of the crime. Um, and um, this eye for an eye, um, I'd like to make a quote that Gandhi had said, an eye for an eye only makes the whole world blind. Good point. Uh, we've got to take another break right now, but we still have a lot of calls to go through. We'll answer them uh, when City Online returns. Stay with us.